Rise and shine, people. Today is the poker cash race tournament, which is ran every month at Asper's Casino for the top 75 players who put in the most hours in the poker room. We finished 66th, so we've qualified for the first time, and we've been playing at this casino for over a year. So I am super excited to finally play in this cash race. We're definitely the underdog going into this, but we've never been better at poker than we are today. So feeling positive starts at 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to try to get there a little bit early. We've got five minutes to get to the casino. We've just parked. JT, what yes. advice have you got for my first tournament? First cash race. Win all your flips. All right. Win all your all-ins. Don't lose any all-ins. Yeah. You'll definitely win. Cheers. Just queuing up for the ticket. That was the advice from one of the most feared players. So what happens if you win this cash race? Uh, you you get the 26k. 26k. 26 and something. Oh nice. Uh, do you go to Vegas or not? No, no, no. It's not no, the Vegas time, but we're gonna do it for next month. 26k is better though. Yeah, okay. it's a kind, kind of money. Money, yeah. money is always better. All right, guys. Good news. We've made it to the break. We're sitting with around the average starting stack, or maybe just above. The first time we got dealt was jacks. We took that down. We started pretty well. We won our first few significant hands. So yeah, we're gonna get some food, we've got 15 minutes, ain't got long. I'll see you back at the tables. Hopefully we can reach the next break. Let's go. Guys, we've made it to the next break. And we've secured 310. Average stack's 48. Our stack right now is around 63, so it's going well. First time we've been in the money in the tournament. All right, my people, let's go over the main hand from the tournament. The big blind is 6k, the ante is 6k, and we pick up ace nine of spades in the low jack. I raise 2x to 12k, and the big stack in the cutoff makes the call. We go two ways out of position to jack 6-2, one spade. We have backdoor spade draw. It's a dry flop. We have a perceived range advantage and we have one over pair. So for those reasons, I decide to bet half pot and he makes the call. The turn is the 10 of spades. We pick up equity and we have 71K. The SBR is just over one. What would you do here? Let's party. You said jam i actually think as a bluff this probably is great it increases our fold equity compared to what i do which is bet half pot i'm setting up a half pot bet on the river for a third barrel on a good card for us so he ends up calling the river is a great card for us it is a king and for that reason i put the rest of my stack in he thinks it over for about 30 seconds i am praying for a fold to keep us in this will be huge i'm gonna jam the river Fold! Fold! Unfortunately though, guys, he does make the call. He finds it. He has king, queen. He binks it on the river. Picks up some equity on the turn. He probably should have folded on the flop, but that's besides the point. You know, reflecting on this hand, I think if we had value, I think how we played it would have been perfect. But I think a slight adjustment we can make with our bluffs is just maximizing our fold equity. Am I being results orientated? Maybe. I'd like to think I'm not, and I would in the future play a bluff more aggressively on a turn rather than trying to reel them in and then setting up a callable jam on the river. For a bluff in hand like we had, I am not too sure that is the right strategy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Unfortunately though, this one got us knocked out of the tournament. We ended up finish 13, cashing out for £455. Our first tournament cash, so extremely pleased about that. £35 of that for your information was from staking 5% in a mate who finished seventh in the tournament. But yeah, we move on from this, learn what we can, and we jump in to the cash games. So yeah, we finished 13th, can't complain, really happy to get in the money in our first cash race. Yeah, really chuffed about that. I'm happy with how I played my final hand. Diving back into the bread and butter of poker. Cash games. There is a limp from the plus one, a limp from the plus oh. two, a limp from the low jack, a limp from the high jack, and action is on us. We have pocket eights are raised to 25. We try to isolate or take it down 
three. We do successfully isolate only the recreational lady in the plus two next to call. And we go heads up to the flop, which comes two, six, nine, two diamonds. She checks and I decide to just range bet and she makes the call. Queen of clubs on the turn. She shouldn't have much queen X. So unless she has a nine X, I think we are beat, which isn't going to be a huge percentage of the time. It is quite a draw heavy board. So I think she's going to have plenty of draws. She could even have a, a pocket pair, which is non-believing. So for that reason, when she checks, I continue to bet one last time. I'm going to check back on all rivers. I bet half pot and she makes the call again. The river is the fourth spade. So when she checks, easy, easy check back. And we are good. I think I definitely got max value out of that one. Two streets of value with pocket eights or as a third pair. I don't think we can complain. Moving along, the cutoff limps and we are on the button with ace eight off. I isolate with a raise to 12 pounds and now big blind wakes up with something when he jams for his remaining 45 pounds stack. Ugh, this feels like such a break even spot. I would definitely have folded in the past, but I'll work out my odds. We need 35% equity to call. Ugh, it's not really a great spot. He could be spazzing though with the king high or anything like that. It's happened in the past. So I give him a spin. Yeah, this man, is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> the one you can't bring up out of shit. He's got a pair of issues. <laughs> You're a complete bad one. He's only got two pair here. Very unfortunate for him. We take it. Oh, yeah. Don't call me. Next up, we have Ace King of Diamonds. Early position has limped. We are next to act. I raised a 15 to try to isolate, and we unfortunately get two callers in position to us. But then, small blind, the recreational lady goes all in for 190 pounds, folds to us, and with all the dead money out there. It's a pretty straightforward call, albeit we are probably flipping. This is what happens next. I'm ahead. Oh. Oh, it's unlucky. Oh, it's unlucky. Let's go. So we ended up making the 420 pounds from the tournament plus 35 pounds for staking 5% in our mate and then got super lucky in our cash game straight afterwards making another 302 pounds in that mostly from the ace king suited hand two hands before we decided to leave so wow we got super lucky made a total profit of 757 pounds today that's the biggest profit we ever made from any poker session does include a tournament, yes, but still making good progress towards Vegas. We couldn't bing the tournament, which, yes, would have got us straight there. Good experience overall. It's only 11 p.m. We're getting home nice and early. What is happening, people? We are back where we first began. Luton Casino. We're going to ask for a permit to record. Now, this is always not gone our way. So we'll have to see if they'll let us record. Hopefully they will. We can get some footage. But we will see Three, shortly. Three, two, one. Talk to me. So, guys, we've got a permit to record. <laughs> All right, guys. Second session getting underway, where we first stepped foot in a casino to play live poker. Just under two years ago now, and for our first hand back for the vlog, we looked down at pocket jacks in the cutoff. In standard 1-2 fashion, we are facing two limps before us, so I raise to 15 to isolate, and we do go heads up with the low jack, who looks very much like a beginner. Flop comes, six, ace, two, rainbow. He donks into us now for a tenner. Super dry flop, so this doesn't look too good, but can't fold just yet. I make the call, and the turn is a tenner spades. We retain our second pair, and now he donks into us again, 20 into 55. I don't hate a call, but I do make a reluctant fold. He ends up showing queen six of spades, so his barrel on the turn makes a lot of sense. Nice answer. We pick up red aces next. Under the gun has limped and it falls to us in the hijack. I raise to 10. Cut off calls and the original limber calls. We go three ways to two, king, four, two, diamonds. Checks to us. I decide to fast play our hand. I bet half pot. Cut off, Ming clicks to 30. He only has 32 more behind. Under the gun gets out of the way. I put them all in. 
and it is an ace on the turn and a blank river we of course take this one down let's go give it here we go here's another tilt card i'll take it all thank you sir so good to play with you after that we are up 10 pounds in this session and the straddle is on as we pick up pocket queens in the cutoff i raise 3x to 15 and only the straddler makes the call we go heads up to jack four ace all of hearts thankfully we hold the queen of hearts he checks to us and I think we can just bet range here. So I do bet one third, he makes the call. 10 of diamonds on the turn. And interestingly now, Villain decides to don't bet two thirds pot. 36 into 53, putting me in a little bit of a spot. I think obviously we can't fold, but the question is, or at least the question I asked myself was whether I should raise all in as a bluff here. I just, yeah, I don't think that's necessary. I do end up just making the call. And the turn is the blankest of blanks, doesn't change a thing, and he slows down and checks. Well, we do have showdown value. I do think he's gonna have an ace a large percentage of the time, which is annoying. But uh, with showdown value, I just decide to check. And he does sure enough show ace free. Nice hand, we move. Moving along, we have dropped down to five handed. As we pick up pocket eights, first to act, I raise to seven. And only the small blind makes the call, who is the same opponent from the previous hand. And we go heads up to the flop, which comes very nice. Five, ace, eight, two clubs. He checks to us, we've hit our set, and I just range bet he makes the call. The turn is the seven of hearts. I do think it's gonna be better for his range. He checks, and now I do make a questionable small bet. I think we can size up here to target his draws asex anyway this could force him to raise us unfortunately he does make the call and the river is another ace this time of hearts he checks it over and of course i need to go for value now i bet 65 into 46 hopefully this will confuse him after betting small on the turn he might make a hero call he does go into the tank and unfortunately, he does end up folding. All right, back to playing seven handed. We pick up King Eight of Diamonds in the low jack. I open to seven. And now the small blind, same opponent from the last two hands, raises us to 17. Such a small raise. I just make the call and we go in position, heads up to a very nice flop. Three, three, four, two diamonds. He see bets 16. I just make the call and the turn is the King of Diamonds. He slows down and checks now i'm not going to bet a card that's better for his range i'm just going to check this one over and hopefully he will bet the river which comes the eight of spades we improve even further i don't think we need to he does check to us i know he's capped however i do think we can put in a juicy bet especially after our recent history he is going to be more inclined to call thinking that we might be bluffing and so i do put in a bet of 65 into 68 i do think we could go even larger here however i don't get too greedy and he does go into the tank thinking once again for around a minute and eventually flicks in the call we show him the bad news and we take down a nice one we peel king queen of clubs next in the small blind there is an under the gun raise from a player who hasn't been very active so i have to assume his range is quite tight low jack cold calls and i decide i have to raise i go to 45 and we do take this one down free you just kind of build up from here. We play one last hand in this short session when we pick up ace queen off in the cutoff. I raise to seven. Button, who has been the main villain of this session, just makes the call. And we go two ways out of position two, three, king, ten, two spades. A very nice flop for our hand and our range. I do decide to bet out 10 into 17. I do think I would prefer check race strategy here. Anyway, Button just makes the call. And on the fourth club's turn, I decide to bet 25 into 37, applying pressure on his 10x and lower pocket pairs. He makes the call again, and I think I'm gonna slow down unless it is a spade. Of course, the jackpot jack. However, it is another four. So I decided to just give up and check. Hopefully we got some showdown with Ace High. He checks back and shows Jack three of diamonds. 
Nice hand. We wrap up the session there, profiting £138 on our first return back to where it all began. Well, that was a very short session. But very successful, I must say. We went in, we got a recording permit, came out with a nice profit of £138. Can't complain whatsoever. It was on a really good table. The field the table was definitely softer than what I'm used to at Aspers. So hopefully it could be like that next time we come. Maybe we just got lucky today and it was an easy table. Guys, just happy we've got two casinos to go to now that we can record at. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.